Listen, you and I, we need to talk. What's up you guys, it's your girl Carly. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. If you are new here, make sure to click the subscribe button down below. I will be posting videos every single day this Vlogmas and I do not want you to miss out. However, today's video is not a Vlogmas video because I wanted to sit down and chit chat about some things that are going around YouTube recently that I have some opinions on. Do I look like a wet rat? Yes. Is my room still decorated for Halloween? Yes. However, we need to talk. Okay, and more specifically, we need to talk about Haley Pham. So if you guys don't know who Haley Pham is, she is a YouTuber here on YouTube. She, I think, is like 17, and she has been getting dragged through the mud recently for, in my opinion, absolutely no reason. I started watching Haley Pham probably about two years ago, and I've always liked her content. I thought it was cute, I thought she was creative, I really, really enjoyed it. Honestly, I have fallen off watching a lot of her content recently, but that has nothing to do with her relatability factor. It's just because I'm 23 and she's 17, and it's just the content that I don't really, really enjoy right now. That being said, let's talk about everyone attacking her on the internet. There is a lot of things going around right now that I would like to talk about because I think it's incredibly unfair and I think that she's really getting dragged for absolutely no reason and I would like to discuss. If you guys have seen the original video by It's Keisha, she did like a Haley Fam isn't relatable anymore video and I watched it and it was okay. And a lot of things that were said were like, oh, she isn't relatable anymore because she's bought a mansion and she isn't relatable anymore because she's like living with her boyfriend at 18 and all of this stuff and like someone at 18 shouldn't be thriving that much and all of this stuff. And honestly, it, it made me really upset because what a lot of people are doing is like bandwagoning against Haley Pham for making like a dream of hers come true. And what really sucks is for someone who is like, example for me, like a small YouTuber, you are so thankful when a video cracks. Like I have a video right now that has I think 8,000 views, which is the most views I've ever received on any single video. And every time I see someone comment or like on it, I'm like, oh my god, like that's so cool. This is amazing. And it's so discouraging as a small YouTuber to see people who build these people up from zero to their millions just to tear them down when they become too related or too not relatable or too successful for them. What I really think sucks about this whole thing is the people who like turn their back on creators. A lot of people I feel like don't understand that the, that person is in the position because of them. They're in the position because they have fans that love them, that they kept grinding at this and all of this stuff. And obviously there's instances where algorithms were very lucky. Emma Chamberlain is a really good example. Algorithms were very lucky or timing was great or it was a niche that like wasn't super filled and all of this stuff. But a, what a lot of people don't understand is they're the driving factor behind all of these people's successes. So when they turn around and they attack these creators that they built up for years and years and years to be able to be in a position where they buy a house or buy a car XYZ is honestly really shitty and really disheartening because nobody wants to sit there and be like, wow, like, I'm so grateful, I'm so thankful for all of this stuff and all of these people who've supported me up until this one specific point and then suddenly these people who were building you up are tearing you down because you're no longer at the same level or perceived level as them. It honestly, that, that makes me upset because a lot of you guys have heard me speak about my friend group and about how incredibly supportive they are and how much I thoroughly appreciate them and every single thing that they do for me. And I feel that same way about everybody who ever watches a video or likes a photo or like listens to my podcast or anything like that. It's really shitty when people that you are so appreciative for turn around and act mean to you or tell you that they don't want to see your content anymore or anything like that just because you are finding a path of success. To me, that screams insecurity, it screams jealousy, and it screams just overall coming from a place of their own. 
I know a lot of people who are like, oh my god, like, Hailey is so not relatable anymore. Oh my god, I can't believe she bought a mansion, blah, blah, blah. I feel like 99% of people, if they were in that similar position, they would be buying things that they've always wanted to. They would be hanging out with, like, the loves of their lives or whatever. They would be hanging out with the people that they appreciate the most and all this stuff and making the most out of their lives. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And a big example that I wanted to bring up when it came to that is the difference between a David Dobrik vlog squad situation and then this whole Haley Fam situation. Because by now I'm sure you've seen David by Heath, his Lamborghini, and all, literally all of his friends' cars and all of this stuff, and no one has bat an eye. Scott bought a literally a $40,000 Rolex, and everybody was like, <laughs> the cool Scott, this is so cool, which is awesome for him. If he had the funds to do that, like, go ahead, I would probably do the same thing. If I had the money to buy a Tesla, I would buy a Tesla. So I don't understand what the difference is between a young female being in a position to buy her dream items and all of this stuff and hang out with people that she wants to versus someone like a David Dobrik or anything like that, a Tana Mojo, anything like that where they are also making the best of their situations and purchasing things that are making them happy and XYZ. So I just, it, it, it blows my mind that people can get so insecure about themselves and the positions that they're coming from to mass attack someone on the internet. And where I truly think this all comes from is people who are in her similar age range, who are 17, 18, 19, 20 type of situation, they are sitting there and they're like, oh my god, I wish I was 18 and living in a mansion and blah 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 blah. Which, I mean, aren't we all? Like, don't you ever fantasize about being super rich and all the stuff that you would do and XYZ? Like, that's a normal thing to experience or to think about. The biggest takeaway is not what you do when you feel insecure, it's what you do after you feel insecure. There are so many times where I think, oh my god, like, my channel isn't big enough, or like, I don't have enough Instagram followers, or blah blah blah, and like, I have friends who are popping off on all of these social media platforms, and it makes me feel really insecure, and it makes me feel really shitty, and it makes me feel like I don't want to continue what I'm doing, but the thing is, none of those people are doing that to me. You know what I mean? Like, none of these people are like, oh, I'm gonna do this so, like, Carly feels bad about herself, or I'm gonna buy this house to, like, remind Carly that she can't buy a house type of thing. Like, my best friend literally almost bought a house. My other friend is considering literally buying a Tesla, like, and I'm so happy for them to be able to do that, because it's not a personal attack. I feel like so many people are like, oh my god, like, at 18, I don't have the funds to even, like, get through a week of whatever. A comparison that I saw was college. Now, if you guys have been following me for a while, you guys know I'm in my fourth year of my BCom, but a major in marketing and a minor in law. Now, I've been in college for five years. I'm graduating next semester. Let me tell you, being in college can be tough. I fortunately live at home with my parents where I don't have to pay rent, I don't have to pay for groceries, XYZ, and I live like a very fortunate cushy life like that. However, I hear 16 year olds talking about the stereotypical college students are broke and they like don't even have money to survive. That that is a very real thing. That is a very real thing that a lot of people go through. They are struggling with student loan debt. It's incredibly hard to pay off. They are working three jobs while getting their degree. That is a very real reality. However, on the other hand, there are so many college students who are fine, who are doing a million side hustles. Like, I've been doing this for six years. That's five years of those years I've been in college, and I've been fine. To, like, homogenize an entire college population and equate it to someone doing good on the internet just blows my mind. Because, yeah, there is always going to be an anomaly in every single situation. There's always going to be one person struggling and one person doing extremely well. That's literally just balance of scales. That's how life is. And it, it just be like that sometimes. However, what my biggest beef is, is people who are so insecure about themselves and their positions who are not willing to change them 
and then attacking other people who are going for their goals. I don't want anybody to think I'm attacking people who are in poor situations or anything like that because I do know there are so many hands dealt in life that are just misfortunate. It, it just unfortunately is like that sometimes. However, my biggest beef is the people who come on the internet to complain about people doing well when they are just sitting there and they've sat there in bed for six hours after school doing nothing except for feeling sorry from for themselves that they are not their level of fame or their level of like higher self or whatever it is. This is becoming like an increasingly large issue because people are seeing this and they're idolizing it and all of this stuff and they're like, oh my god, like I wish I had that XYZ, but nobody's working for it. And they're seeing these people grow in their subscribers and buy these houses and they're getting this internal resentment because they know deep down that they are their own worst enemy and that they are not putting in the work to be in the position where they want to see themselves. I just think it's wild that literally the entire internet banded together to hate on an 18 year old and say oh my god like she's so not relatable because she's not unmotivated and watching YouTube for six hours like I am. That's just the reality in life, in business, in just face-to-face -face interactions. There are people who grind every single day, who crush it every single day, and there are people who sit there and feel sorry for themselves and their situations, and eventually this is gonna happen where this person is just gonna keep getting better and better and better, more opportunities are going to come their way, they are going to skyrocket and achieve their goal, and this person is gonna stay stagnant and they're gonna get resentful, and everybody who is doing even a slight ounce, little baby bit better than them, they're gonna hate them because they come from a place of insecurity about themselves. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I would love to know your opinion on the Haley Fam situation in the comments down below. I love you guys so much. I hope you guys have an incredible day. The next time I see you, it'll be Vlogmas, so make sure you subscribe down below, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you there. Bye!